The big mission has started. We're finally rendering all these sandbag walls. I mentioned it the other day, but because it's been winter time, the frozen weather, cold temperatures has been delaying getting the rendering done because it doesn't set properly. And from the few pads I did right as it started to frost up, they haven't really lasted. So we definitely made the right decision holding off till now. As you can see, this is where we got to right as the freezing weather started coming. And we've had a tiny bit of cracking on the last sort of batch of mixes we put on. Whereas everywhere else held up wonderfully over the winter. There is one hell of a load big more amount of this to do though. As you can see, we've got about a hundred metre section all the way down here to do. And annoyingly, a lot more bags to replace. I did a load, as you can see there's a fresh one. But the cats walking around the edge of this have destroyed these perforated bags and combined with the dogs a little bit with these bigger holes got quite a few that need replacing now and it's not going to be too much effort can pretty much just take the, the broke sandbag and pour it straight into a new one and put it back on the wall but obviously it's a good hour or two to sort them the path to the wellhouse as you can see was pretty overgrown I'll give it a quick stream and there's a few bits left along the edges of the bag but I'm just going to mortar over those anyway it won't really matter too much going to ease back into it though and complete a nice small wall for today the one that's outside the well house here. It's been needing to be done for a long, long time, so let's get it done. First task though, turn on the 30 year old mixer. As you can see, no health and safety with this one. Now I'm doing relatively sort of standard mix. About four to one of cement and sand. With one hand, action shots, a bit heavy, and this bloody bag, going to be nice and awkward. And we'll just let it all mix a bit. I'm trying to get it fairly sort of wet, but firm at the same time, because you need it fairly wet so it sticks to the bags properly. Needs a little bit more water though. Yeah, this is always the danger now. Put in too much and then you've got to do more mixing. I think it was fairly strong, so don't want to be adding in big wads of sand to try and dry it out, sand to dry it out again. But yeah, we're sort of there now, as you can see. It's all squashing together when it's rolling over. Bit battery texture. I'm sure someone will point out the professional sort of test for how you guess, but a fair amount of these rendering on bags and stuff now so i just sort of go for it by eye know roughly how much water and roughly how much stuff to put in and it gets there in the end now the consistency isn't a major problem I haven't found anyway unless you get it too runny as you can see it's sort of a little bit runny but it's clumps together good still that's about right i think what i like to do is fill in all of the gaps with the first coat and then that makes a nice sort of big join to all the bags as well. And I think it gives a nice something hard for the uh, top coat to stick to. I think it makes the top coat bind better. We have tried both ways around, and it does work if you just sort of slap your uh, your, the, your mortar on the edge at the bottom and then drag it up to get like a smooth finish. The finish doesn't necessarily make it stronger. I'm still yet to find out. We're still in the test stage, really, of the wall that we did just before winter, and it sort of survived just the same. But it's definitely a lot less render that goes on, so that tells me that it spins. And doing it this way as well, you feel like you get a good bit of progress pretty fast because it really doesn't take too long to do this first sealing up. The different bag joins layer. And we managed to get good coverage on the wall to get away. So like I say, it's a good visual achievement after you've done so many hard days grafting with the bags because it's a lot of grafting with the bags. Filling all these bags is a tough task, let's just say that. And then you know what I'm doing along the edge of the bricks is just whack a load in. Just move it off, move it into that gap. Form a bit of a join. A bit of grass in there, but it won't matter. That's 
spot on. So this is only one and a half mixes in the mixer. As you can see, it's quite a fair amount of coverage. It looks like it's getting there now. Obviously, it's the same amount again, if not a little bit more, to cover it off with the final layer. But just this layer alone gives it significant strength. That's why I'm keen to get this done ASAP. You can probably see this one's got a little bit wet over the winter and it's moved a tiny bit. I've adjusted it back as much as I can, but that's why I want to get this rendered today. First wall, as well as being the little one, it's the one that's most likely to fall down. So I'll get to the back side now. I've got a little bit of things to clear here and a little bit of streaming to do. Well, crack on with that quick. So that was nice and easy until I've got to this corner because there's a hell of a lot of big brambles in here. As you can see, that's a drain pipe if I ever need to empty the tank in there. I can just dump it outside rather than flooding the well house. But everything has grown up thick around it, so I'm probably going to have to get my hand snips out to get in here because some of them are very meaty and very close to the bag, so I might chop the bag if I'm using a power tool. So we've got one more big mix to do. I think I'm just going to tip the whole last third of this bag in. That's it. And I've not got much left in this bag. I need eight more spoons now, roughly. But I have a load more left. And so it flies on this stuff, does it? It really doesn't take long. Gotta get a bit of skill in there. There is a little bit of a technique, I guess, of sort of forcing it into the gap and then smoothing it off at the same time with that extra bit of pressure. I guess it's the same sort of vibe as if you're vibrating concrete. You're, you're pushing all the air out of that gap and then you're compressing all of the render water into a nice smooth blob. So you don't end up with like thin patches. The patches that aren't connected to the because obviously smoothing all this together makes this technically like one piece rather than if it was all not connected, not pushed together properly. Wouldn't be as strong, no idea as strong. I'm just gonna chuck a load of this on the door. Smooth it out real fast because it needs to be quite thick. The thicker this is, the more I can bevel it outwards as well. And then that way, it's a nice extra bit of sturdy base for this wall because obviously it's got no foundation to it. It needs something to stop it blowing over in a ridiculous wind. But we had a lot of big storms this winter that didn't blow over without any mortar in. So I imagine once it's all rendered together, this is going nowhere unless someone physically drives into it with a vehicle. But there might be a test to be done at a later date. See how much of a force these sort of walls can actually take. If a normal brick wall was built the same, you hit it with a car, it really wouldn't take a lot before it falls over or smashes to pieces. But because of the more flexible nature of this construction method, it might actually perform better. Yeah. We'll have to test that. So it's one of them sunny days, but it's raining at the same time now. Fortunately though, got all the first coat on, so this wall is ready for a second coat tomorrow. Still a fair amount of light left in the day, so I'm going to spend a bit of time and fix up the wall outside the house now, start getting that rendered too. I already replaced a load of bags, but as you can see, the dogs have damaged a few. So for this last bit on the wall, I'm pretty much just slapping huge wads up against it. I'm giving it a bit of a smooth off. So again, I'm probably going to need to do a second coat on after this because I'm trying to do all the build up in one coat. Just a little bit thicker like this. Probably not going to work out best as you can see. Smooth that alright to the top of that bag, but I do really want to build it out another bit more if I can curl it around on the top of the bag. Just then, once that's on. Put some sort of coping stone, 
It's not very nice anyway. It's a bit of a, a tapping for the wall. Make it look pretty. I was tempted just to do it with random sounds over there, but it'll look much nice if we get some proper corners to put on the top, half round, something like that. So I've got all the way, about a third of the way along. The sun is setting, so we'll be back at it tomorrow now. I am running a little bit low on cement, so definitely not got enough cement to finish off the rest of these bags, so I'm going to have to go to the Bill's Merchant or get a delivery. Probably just going to nip down there, though, get another five, six bags. But I reckon I've got approximately five to ten percent of the wall that needs doing done today in this couple of hours this afternoon, so going to be at least a couple of weeks of doing this, I reckon. I guess we'll wrap up today here then. If you've watched this much of the video, don't forget to give it a like. Drop me a comment, see what you think of the uh, the walls coming in together so far. And if anyone's actually built one of these themselves, let me know on what sort of techniques you think I should have a go at. Because I've built a few of them, but I've been sort of changing the technique a bit every time I go along. So I'm always open to options. Uh, yeah, right, we'll leave it here then. Till next time.